Hey guys, welcome back. This is stage four, the Intelligentsia Cup. This is the Autobahn Road Race. And I'm um, picking up front camera coverage here of um, pretty much the second half of the race. Joined the, the breakaway here, but it's it's way too big. There's probably like 15 riders, maybe even more in the group here. And um, all the big teams are represented. And for whatever reason, these Kern House guys on my left, they're, they're not working. Well, actually, I think I know the reason. The race leader's in the group, he's a really strong sprinter, and they're probably making sure that he's doing his, his fair share before they commit to this breakaway. You can see on the right here, this is the breakaway group as it stands, and we're still keeping it fast. There's still a lot of motivated riders who are taking hard pulls at the front who want to stay away from the 70 or so riders chasing. There's one notable exception, and that's the Da Vinci rider here on my right, and he was doing the funniest thing. He kept telling me that he's eating and he would skip his pull, and that maybe works once, maybe twice, but like eventually um, I was calling him on, on that bullshit and making him pull through, but he, uh, he was pretty stubborn about it. So when a breakaway is this big and there's people skipping pulls, there's going to be attacks, and that's a good example of one right there. This guy went for a long cream, I think is what that was, and wasn't too concerned about it, because if it didn't have the right mix of a of riders in it then it's not going to go the distance especially with 34 kilometers to go but as we got closer to the finish it became pretty obvious that uh, this group wasn't going to stay together and there was probably going to be a selection from this selection that would make its way towards the finish so i i was just looking for the strong riders in the group making sure that uh it wasn't using any unnecessary energy chasing down a futile attacks that weren't going to make it but ones like this where I'm on his wheel already, it's a cyclist guy who's following the race leader and there's a current house rider up the road, that one's definitely one that you need to follow. So it looks like there's two guys still up the road. Now I saw a lot of these guys like this triple X rider, some other guys like myself who didn't have teammates in this group who were initiating attacks, which, I mean, maybe if you're like a time trial style rider, something like that. I can see, but for me, um, you know that that burden should be on um, on the major teams. So at this point, there's a particularly threatening group up the road with the major teams, and I'm following Wouter here, the trek rider, who's really strong, getting a free ride, and uh, he starts to open it up, and I get bumped into the grass, which was kind of sketchy because I don't really know like what was in that grass or if it's like mud. It's been it would have been raining the previous few days, so so um, that was kind of a scary moment. But I, I jump back in and. Um, and I'm kind of with these guys now who were just sitting up while there's a cohesive group of like six with maybe 20 seconds up the road all working together. So I work my way to the front and uh, boom, my buddy uh, on the Da Vinci team, he launches this pretty massive attack with a current house rider in tow. And, and I recognize that as a major threat because he's motivated to get up there. I'm motivated to get up there. And um, that's this is my opportunity to make that bridge. So I, I really commit to this effort here. Just to, just to even get on, on this wheel is a really, really tough effort. 26 Ks left in the race, and um, I gotta get on this now. This is, this is critical to get up to the front group. And it's worth noting too that uh, the race leader isn't represented in that front group. So, so I'm especially motivated to get up there because I know that everyone's gonna be working and going to be doing what they can to prevent the race leader from being up there because people also, especially on Kern House and cyclists, they're thinking about the overall competition, so they want to distance themselves on the race leader as best as they can. So this Kern House guy, he's not going to be chasing. He's got a teammate up the road. So eventually, Da Vinci guy pulls off, and uh, I need to keep it fast. I'm, I'm dying a thousand deaths here, but I need to keep it fast. I need to make sure because now we're, we're committed to it. There may be uh, 10 seconds ahead of us, and we probably have a 15 or 20 second gap behind us to the chasers. So I'm fully committed to this one now, and 
I just need to keep it fast. Give the Da Vinci Rider some respite. Because for the time being, we're, we may as well be teammates. We're allies in this chase. We have a common interest in getting across. And once we get across, we can kind of reevaluate and maybe start attacking each other, wait for the sprint or whatever. But uh, you can see them up the road. They're not very far. So the Kernhaus guy eventually, so he, he puts in this little attack. I don't know if he was trying to, trying to distance us or what, but, but I think he looked back, saw the gap behind, saw the gap in front of us, and thought, well, you know, we, we might not make it without his help, so he, now, he's, now he's working too. He realized that, that uh, we're invested in this uh, bridge attempt, so, um, so now he's helping us too, which, which was a real godsend because, uh, you know, we, we may not have made it without his help. I don't know how much more the, the Da Vinci guy had, but, uh, but I was dying for sure. You know, it was a relief, too, to see him do this right here. He was talking into his radio, presumably up to his teammate in the group ahead, you know, telling him to, to, to slow it down up there, stop working, make sure we can get across. Because even though it looks close right here, we, we still have work to do, and this is the hardest part of the course, um, falls flat uphill. And um, as we got closer, he, he put in this, this uh, attack to try to get across, maybe shed one of us. And to be honest, it almost worked on me. Like, uh, look at my heart rate. I mean, that's about as fast as it goes. Um, I'm just, I'm just killing myself. And despite what it looks like, I am, I am dying just to hold like the 300, 400 watts I'm doing right here. Just praying that they're not going to be attacking up there because these last like three, four, five meters to close down were, were the hardest part of the race for me. And I still have 23 kilometers to go. So, so, um, I'm just glad I made this selection. I'm glad that, uh, strongest sprinters are not behind me but uh, now I got to rest and you know the best way to get that rest especially in the long term is I'm just not going to interrupt this productive pace line everyone's playing nice up here everyone has a common interest in staying away from the group behind and I'm not going to be the first one to stop the rotation so you know when one person stops pulling that spawns two more people to stop pulling and then next thing you know the attacks are flying the group behind is chasing back on and uh, that's the last thing I want. I want to sprint out of this group right here. I'm happy with that. So when I heard my Da Vinci buddy tell me again for like the fifth time that he's eating, no! I screamed at him <laughs> and I just, uh, I got pissed off. He gave me a dirty look and we're not friends, but that's cool. And despite the cyclist guy here trying to uh, take me off the back or something or take his pull for him, we fell into a pretty good rhythm, and um, we were all uh, we were all working well together. Then there's my Da Vinci pal here, still playing games, trying to take me off the back. But you know, maybe he's hungry. Maybe he didn't get enough to eat. He's still pissed off at me for that. So he started skipping poles, and um, with about a lap and a half to go, he was the first one to launch an attack and disrupt our nice rotation. So, so this was something that I that I was worried about because I wanted to roll in this group together, which I knew wasn't going to happen. But after that first attack win, it didn't take long for just a series of, uh, of a lot more attacks going. And, and just like before, I wasn't too concerned about it unless it had that right mix. With two Kernhaus riders and two cyclist riders in this group, they were, the pressure was really on them um, to, uh, to initiate this move. And then if both of those teams were represented, like in this case right here, this group up the road, I had to burn some matches to get across. Uh, Kernhaus looking back for me to close this gap because he's got his teammate up the road. All these guys raced really well, really tactically sound. Um, I wouldn't expect anything less. These guys are, um, these guys are elite, they're, they're domestic pros. So, so uh, I was just trying to keep it together and uh, you know, come in, my best chances were, were from a field sprint out of this group. So I just wanted to make sure that I was, I was at the front of it. So here goes a current house guy chasing a cyclist guy, pretty threatening. But I look back and I realize Da Vinci Rider and then also uh, Wouter are back here. I wanted to make sure the Da Vinci Rider, he was, 
he was uh, taking his fair share of pulls because he's already demonstrated that he's strong, he wants to attack, he doesn't want it to come to a sprint, and I wanted to make sure he was at least burning some matches. Here we are on the last lap. The cyclist guy went, and and I just rolled it because it was convenient, and I looked back and it was like nobody was chasing. So I thought, well, well maybe this will work. And in hindsight, you know, probably a mistake. This really isn't my, my power profile to go long like this, but, but if they're gonna let us get a gap, you know, Worst case scenario, it tires them out just as much as it tires me out. But alas, it didn't work. We get caught. Again, Da Vinci just under three Ks to go, just refusing to do any work at the front. I'm worried about him too now because he's strong. And now Cyclist was launching these attacks. Here goes a, an individual Cyclist rider, 2.5 Ks to go. This actually, believe it or not, I'm, I'm happy. Like I'm happy when just an individual rider goes like this because now I'm not going to rotate through the front. I'm going to leave it to Kernhaus. Sure enough, Kernhaus goes. Everyone's chasing, so this is good. I'm getting a uh, getting a nice draft. Wouter strong. I'm on his wheel, and uh, this is fantastic for me because because I want it to be fast through here. I want it to be strung out. The minute it slows down, these guys, these uh, these UCI Continental guys, just attack. Like they don't. They won't. Uh, let sprinters come to the line fresh. So this is good news for me right here. Wouters, Wouters pulling me back up to this move. We only have a couple of bike lengths. Oh, this was pretty funny too. Here in the, in the closing meters, we we pass, we we lap the field, and they're screaming at us. I get a little bit of encouragement. You got the kids on the right, threw a bottle of their way. They were stoked. That was pretty cool. And then boom, there goes my buddy Da Vinci. I was worried about him. He's so strong. That was such a gnarly attack. And um. And that's, that's with 1.5 Ks to go. That's a threatening one. Everyone's on high alert now. And I'm... Oh God, I don't have much left of my legs, to be perfectly honest. But again, you know, individual rider attacking like that... It's up to these other teams to chase. So I'm still thinking there's a pretty good chance it's going to come back together. But look at that gap he established, like, right away. I mean, I was throwing shade earlier, but... But I got to hand it to the guy. Uh, really impressive attack here with uh, with just over 1k to go. So I look up the road now I see a cyclist guy chasing it down which is bad because um, that's that's really eliminating two people from the chase because now his teammate who's back in the group here he's not going to chase if he's got a teammate up the road. So now it's up to Kernhaus and I'm liking my chances still at this point. Here we're 800 meters to go still liking my chances because I'm thinking oh Kernhaus missed it. They're super strong they're going to bring this back, they're going to close it down, and then I'm going to be able to sit on get a free ride up until uh, the sprint finish. But we come up on their wheel here, and it's apparent they're not doing anything, so so basically at this point that group of two is gone. We have 500 meters to go, they have like 10 seconds, they're gone. So now I'm just going to try to snag that last podium spot, and the attacks are flying now. These guys desperate who aren't, who aren't sprinters are trying to go for a long one. Still looking really good for my podium spot. Unfortunately, the win is off the table at this point. And I'm really not in the best position here. And now we're, we're 200 meters to go. I, I need to just need to punch it. I get on a good wheel here, though. And Kernhaus drops his chain. I jump on his teammate's wheel. I find a gap where there really isn't one. And, man, it just opens up. I'm screaming. And uh, I just, I'm able to, to secure that last podium spot. I am thrilled to get that last podium spot. What an awesome day. This result alone made the trip worth it. Congrats to Cyclist. Congrats to Da Vinci for taking the top two steps. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.